we are joined by Jim Schmiedler, who is an associate professor at Notre Dame University. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. It's this my morning. pleasure to be here. So, tell us about Tuesday's big event, Robot Football. So, we've got the Robot Football competition here at the ASCE conference Tuesday afternoon. Uh, it's between University of Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, and Ohio Northern University, the Polar Bears. This is the third time the teams have met. Uh, last year we played at Notre Dame in the first intercollegiate football game. Uh, these are small uh, computer printer sized robots, wheeled robots that the, st the undergraduate students at the two universities have built. And they stand on the sidelines and control the robots to play a slightly modified version of football. Uh, Notre Dame won their, their first intercollegiate game on their home field. And then it's a classic college football home and home series. We played at Ohio Northern this past May and Ohio Northern won on their home field. So this is, we're calling it the national championship to, to decide, both teams are, are one and one, and we'll see who wins the game this afternoon. And clearly this is a lot of fun for kids, but, but really talk about how this robot program is making engineering real for these children. Sure, so for the, for the students, it's an exciting opportunity to, uh, to spend a year or even just a semester from the ground up building robots, they program them, they buy the parts, they design them, uh, they test them, they put the sensors in, and then it's not just a design project that they show off for a faculty member at the end of, of the semester. It's a show that they put on for as many as, we've had about 600 people come to both campuses for the show. They do a lot of outreach to the local kids in the community uh, who come and, and see the event, and they see that you know uh, engineering challenges are fun and these kids who have put in long hours to, to build the robots really enjoy what they're doing. They really understand the technical challenges. And so when the final whistle blows and the game is over, you get kind of this rush onto the field of, of the younger kids, the K through 12 kids who are in the stands. And instead of you know, picking up the, the players and carrying them off the field on their shoulders, they pick up the controllers and they drive the robots around. And the college students are explaining to them the technical details and, and how everything works and the sensors and and the kids, uh, they start to appreciate the, the real difficulties of making these things work and the fun of solving those challenging engineering problems. Now, along with robot football, you also created a very innovative program called WeHab that's helping stroke victims and many others. Explain what that is. So I'm really a, a roboticist by training, and I've, I've been involved with the computer scientists and the psychologists on, on using technology uh, to enhance rehabilitation. And what we've done is we take the Nintendo Wii Balance Board, which is a, a very inexpensive force sensor, essentially. Uh, it's inexpensive because of the economies of scale. And we sell many, many of these for, for video games. And so uh, the accuracy on these is really quite good. And so what we've done is, is we access the, the Bluetooth signal from the Wii Board so we can pull the data off of it as a sensor. And then we write our own code on a laptop that essentially instruments the typical balance activities that a therapist does with a stroke patient. So someone who has a stroke often has weakness on, on one side of the body, and a therapy goal to enhance their locomotion is to get them to, to strengthen that, that weak side and have better, more symmetric posture. Um, what we do is we provide then visual feedback to both the therapist and the patient while they're doing therapy on top of the Wii Balance Board. And the Wii games are terrific, but they're, you know, they're designed for, for healthy people, for younger folks with, with full coordination skills. And they don't allow a therapist to, to really tailor the activity to, to the needs of the patient. So what our software does is it gives the therapist that flexibility. They use a Nintendo Wiimote to, uh, to control the program. And that's, uh, that's nice because it means they're hands-free to help the, the, the patient during the therapy session. And what they've told us is that visual feedback that it provides for both them and the, the patient is really beneficial in terms of improving their therapy outcome. Um, it, it builds trust between the therapist and the patient because the, the quantifiable nature of the feedback is such that there's no question as to whether they're doing the task or, or not doing the task or whether their weight is balanced or not. And, and the patients who have used it have been really positive about it. You know, we hear things like, now I can tell my grandkids I play Wii too. Um, and the interface is kept very clean and very simple because it's a therapy system. Uh, the price is very low. You know, for the price of a laptop and a, a $95 balance board, you can have a fully operational visual feedback system 
in, in your home, potentially. That's a direction we'd like to go, but in basically any clinic in the country. So between the robot football and we have, how are you hoping that these skills will translate to your engineering students? So there's a lot of overlap actually between these, these projects. So we're taking, uh, in, the, in the robots, we've got sensors, we've got contact sensors for accelerometers for sensing tackles. We've got infrared sensors for the quarterback to, to locate the, the wide receiver and throw the ball. You've got encoders on the motors. Uh, there's a lot of code that is written to control these robots and we use video game controllers to, to do the interface there and, and operating over, over Bluetooth and, and Zigbee. And so the, the networking, the sensors, the coding, the, the blending of a mechanical and electrical system, uh, the two projects are, are really complementary in that regard and, and the skills carry over from one to the other. We hoped that the students see this as, uh, as designing systems, right? It's, you're not gonna work on one little component and, and throw it off to somebody else but you have to be at a systems level of thinking. And they certainly do that with the robots. You've got a, a group of students building one robot, and then you've got a group of a group of students building a team of robot, and then you've got multiple groups of students putting on a, a, a game uh, to, to demonstrate to the, the younger kids how exciting these things are. Um, and so it's, it's really, and, and in the we have, right, we've got, again, we've got a, a system there in place where you've got a human in the loop or multiple humans in the loop. And the real benefit there is to get the system designed so that it's, it's focused on the needs of the, the user. And there the users for us are the therapists and the patients. And in the robot football game, the users for us are our students driving the robots, but more importantly than that, the, the younger kids who come out and, and drive the robots at the end of the game and, and enjoy watching uh, before that, that final whistle blows. Jim Schmiedler, thank you very much for joining us, Associate Professor at Notre Dame. Best of luck today at Robot Football. We're looking for a victory, but uh, basically we're looking for a great crowd. Thank you for having me. It was great to be here. Sure.